Hello everyone and welcome to Superman Homepage Live, brought to you by supermanhomepage.com, the number one Superman fan site in the world. In this, our March 25th, 2024 show, we're going to be covering a range of topics, including uh, some news for Superman and Lois TV fans. We've got some big comic book news to talk about. Uh, we also have, being the end of the month, we have our regular segments to get through, uh, including the Super Secret Soundbite. We're going to be doing This Week in History, and we're also going to talk about other things like merchandise as well. So stick around. We've got a full hour of great stuff to talk about. And when I say us, I mean me and my co-host, Mark Lax. Welcome, Mark. How you doing? Good. How you doing, Steve? Doing well. Um, hopefully the sound is all great tonight. i uh, popped up the volume, so everybody should be able to listen clearly and hear me fine so uh that's great and uh as always mark uh you're sounding great and looking great and you're back in your uh, regular uh location no longer in yes, I, in hiding no i'm not in hiding this week you know everyone Excellent. everyone knows where i am now i'm so. uh, glad to hear it glad to see that you're, you're back out of uh isolation uh-huh. <laughs> still isolated though uh, i know you're out there on your well, own uh, so yeah. <laughs> that's true but nevertheless we are here together tonight with all the yeah. fans around the world to talk about superman so uh let's get into it and uh if uh we will, should stay off the top of the show that uh, we want to thank our sponsors and our patrons douglas meacham john patrick van pelt tina murray and c ralph adler we appreciate your support and if you want to join those fine folks and be part of the superman homepage support crew then you simply have to go to superman homepage uh, oh, sorry, you should go to, on YouTube, go to the Join Now button. Um, there are different levels of membership with different levels of perks. Or you could go to patreon.com slash Superman homepage where there are different levels of membership uh, available to you, and that's a great way to support the show. Uh, so there are definitely ways to support Superman homepage. Also, if you want to get onto the program tonight and have a chat with Mark and I, uh, we are taking calls probably about the half hour mark of tonight's program uh to do that all you have to do is simply uh go to supermanhomepage.com slash live where you can press the call now button or you can scan the qr code on your screen right now for those who are watching live and that will also take you to the green room where you'll be able to participate watch the show hear everything that's going on and then we'll bring you on when we can now if you are going to talk to us tonight make sure that you either Use a headset because we are a bit on a bit of a delay and uh, that can cause a little bit of an issue. And please use an external microphone uh, because uh, when you're just trying to use the, the microphone from your system without headphones, uh, it causes a bit of feedback. So make sure you've got all the right equipment to go to talk to us tonight. But if you're a little bit shy and don't want to get on the phone and talk to us tonight, then feel free to participate in the comments, both on YouTube, Facebook, we are keeping an eye on everything everyone has to say. Uh, you can participate there. Mark and I will keep an eye on everything you say and react to them as we go along tonight. And we will be able to uh, answer any questions you might have. Like the first one that's come uh, straight off the bat is from John Patrick Van Pelt, who asks this Super Chat question, which I will uh, bring to the screen right now. It says, Steve, I... Watched Justice League Crisis on Infinite Earths Part 1, which was enjoyable, but my question is, I was still a little bit confused about why there was no ending credits at all. Have you heard if they are going to merge all three parts into one movie once they are all released? I haven't heard if uh, there are going to be any merged three-parters, like a big extended version. They, they probably will down the track do a kind of collected edition where all three movies will be part of uh, one big collection. That probably will happen down the track. I don't know anything official. I'm just guess guessing. Um, for a short, I'm pretty sure there were credits. Maybe just on a digital version there weren't, but um, there are always yeah, I don't, I don't. There must have been. I don't <laughs> I don't remember. And I'm trying to trying to think because a lot of times at the end, I always try to make sure if I don't know who's doing, you know, the different voices, I always try to look to see who's who. But I, t I don't remember. Yeah, it's, I, I, neither do I. It's like one of those things where when the movie ended, I just kind of stopped the, I didn't look at the credits. So if there were yeah. credits, so you might be wrong. Right, John? Um, I can't guarantee why, if there were or weren't any credits, why that was the case. Again, it might be what version you saw or how it was packaged or, you know, 
whether it was a physical release, I don't know, but uh, we do know part two is coming and we'll make sure we look to see if there are any credits on there or they might just leave the credits for all for the third part of the film and uh, do them all then together. Uh, so uh, Mind the Gap says they have merged a few of the two parters like Dark Knight Returns and Death and Return of Superman. So I imagine they'll probably do a similar package deal once all three movies are released and double dip, as it were, uh, for those fans who are completists and try to make sure that they have everything that is ever released. But thank you, John, for that uh, super chat. Uh, speaking of super chats, that's a great way for you to also contribute to the website. On YouTube, you can um, click on the dollar symbol there on your screen. A slide will appear on your screen. Uh, you decide how much you're willing to donate, and we will feature your super chat question or comment on the screen, just like John's was. Uh, there are also super stickers and super thanks if you want to give those a try on YouTube. All right, well, let's get into tonight's topics. Uh, we start with uh, movie news, and it's not really... We don't have anything about the upcoming 2025 Superman movie at this point in time. We do know that they are well into production. Uh, James Gunn has been uh, posting pretty much daily on his social media accounts, but nothing of great value. Like, he's just like he had dinner with his wife the other night and, they sh and posted a, f uh, a selfie of the two of them. Uh, saying that it's been a couple of months because he's been so busy that they haven't been able to get together and have dinner. So he's kind of talking about, you know, we're in production, Superman stuff's happening, uh, but he hasn't been revealing of anything of, of great note or newsworthy, so nothing to report on that side of things, other than obviously they are filming Superman right now, and they, uh, they were in um, Norway, and now I believe they are back in, um, where's the head office? Atlanta. Atlanta, Georgia. That... Yeah, Atlanta, yeah. Georgia. So, uh, yes. But we do have some movie related news, and that is in the shape of this new book that's coming out. It's uh, called DC Cinematic U uh, Universe. Just trying to get to my notes here. Uh, it is a book that will be uh, out. It's available for pre order now through our website if you want to uh, check it out. But the book is from DK Publishing, DK Books, uh, DC Cinematic Universe, a celebration of DC at the movies. Uh, and it's uh, pretty much a huge book containing 256 pages with all the details about the, the DC Cinematic Universe over the years. Christopher Reeve there on the cover. Uh, an interesting book. Yeah. It's, you know. Hopefully it'll focus on, um, well, no, hopefully it'll, it'll focus on the whole, you know, trying to go back, I guess, really from Superman the movie on. Hopefully it'll give, um, you know, coverage. I'm sure they're going to talk a lot about the big blockbusters and then go into, uh, you know, Zack Snyder's world and all of that. But, um, yeah, it should be, it should be something interesting. I would like to pick it up. Yeah, it's uh, it, that's the full cover there. Obviously, got uh, different DC characters from various movies, and for the first time ever, immerse yourself in the thrills and spills of DC at the movies in one spectacular book, uh, forward by Michael Uslan, who was involved in the uh, restoration of uh, some of the films, uh, especially the Christopher Reeve films, and uh, there is that's the double page spread or part of the double page spread for Superman, which is page 38 and 39 in the book. So yeah, definitely worth checking out. It's uh, available from Amazon to order now. It won't be released until September, September 3rd. So, uh, but definitely one I thought fans would want to have a look at and uh, check out. And if you do decide to purchase it, please do so through the Superman homepage links because we do get kickbacks at no extra cost to you. And that help is a way that you can help support the website. So yeah, that's the book coming out, uh, the DC Universe, a celebration of DC at the movies. Okay, so let's have a look uh, what else there is in the world that uh, we can look forward to now. Nothing really else on the movie side of things. So we move to the world of Superman on TV, and we have some casting announcements, some further casting announcements in from TVLine.com telling us that Douglas Smith has been cast to play Jimmy Olsen in the upcoming fourth and final season of Superman and Lois. 
Now, what do you know? Another redhead. That's two redheads cast <laughs> as Jimmy Olsen in one year. Obviously, the other one being for the upcoming movie. Yes. Uh, not familiar with this actor. Um, but no, he's got that, <laughs> I guess he's got that youthful Jimmy look to him, yeah. you know. So... Yeah, he's uh, described as an extroverted 20-something known for being the life of the party around the office. Despite being work colleagues with Clark, he's been unable to get him out of his awkward shell. Uh, unaware of Clark's super secret, Jimmy's still determined to become his pal. So, yeah, you said you're unfamiliar with him. Uh, he's been in roles on HBO's Big Love and Season 2 of Big Little Lies. Um, he's actually the younger brother of Gregory Smith, who has directed eight episodes of Superman and Lois to date. Okay. So he's got a little um, nepotism going, I guess. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. But if, I guess if you're the right person for the part, then sure. uh, it doesn't hurt. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yes. And it sounds like um, uh, it sounds like it could be a flashback or um, the way it's described. Yeah, well, there will be flash flashbacks coming uh, because... We do know from Bitsy Tullock that uh, who posted a number of uh, photos at the moment uh, on um, her Facebook and Instagram, um, and she has said the fans. We know the fans love flashbacks, and the um, creators of Superman and Lois are uh, have delivered. Their writers have delivered. So here's a couple of photos. Obviously, some baseball. Scenes, some scenes from in the office at the Daily Planet. Uh, both of them looking pretty smart and snazzy mm. in their uh, costumes. And there's Lois in the baseball cap. And yeah, so some flashback scenes for both uh, the Daily Planet, obviously a baseball game of some kind, and then Clark there with his press pass. So plenty to look forward to in the upcoming fourth season. Jimmy Olsen. We have uh, that uh, actress who was uh, playing Lex Luthor's um, right-hand woman, if you like, who took you know was uh, from the comic books. The name is escaping me at the moment. Uh, who figured um, out? Uh, Amanda McCoy. I mean, yep, Amanda, Amanda McCoy. McCoy. Yep, uh, who rec uh, figured out Clark's secret identity in the comic books. Uh, but uh, we don't know if that's where they'll go with that character for season four. But yeah, so two new cast members, uh, Amanda McCoy and Jimmy Olsen for season four. While in the meantime, uh, it looks like obviously with the regular cast members that we had for the first three seasons are taking a back seat because they're more in cameo and supporting roles and won't be as regular cast members as uh, what they have been in the first three seasons. Right. I mean, we know, you know, the, they're going to concentrate on the main, um, you know, Clark Lois and their kids. And, you know, I like the idea of seeing them at the planet. I know it's probably just going to be flashback, but it, it'll be nice to see more of that because we only saw a handful of things, you know, throughout the last few seasons. Um, hopefully we'll see them, you know, in action a little bit more. I guess they're not going to be so far. We don't hear about them using Perry, but you know, that's, um, that's, I, I always saw in the, uh, in the beginning when they, they used, um, who was the character instead of Perry at the, the beginning of, of, uh, the series, it, not Roger Stern. No, no, no. no. Um, the the character, the character he 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 took Perry's place when Perry, I think, had a heart attack or cancer. I don't remember oh, back in the nineties. Not Ron Troop. No, no, no. I for, I okay. forget the Michael guy. I forget. <laughs> yeah, my, Michael would know. Um, Somebody the in the thing comments about, you know, might be able to give us a heads up on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Because when I when I was thinking about it, I thought it'd be interesting if they they used George Taylor, you know, oh, they yes. didn't use Perry. I thought it, you know using George Taylor, who was like the Daily Star editor and yes. you know Golden Age of Superman, that would have been a kind of cool idea. But instead, they went for this other guy, and I was always wondering why they go with him because he was not a very popular um, character. Mm. But again, his name, his name escapes me. I just, I said all that just because I thought you know. Just to say that I thought George Taylor would have been a good idea. Yeah, uh, that would be an interesting choice. But, uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see what they do there with all the Daddy Planet stuff. If they will have a Perry White or if it's mainly just focusing on Jimmy and Clark's relationship. But uh, it uh, should be interesting to see. 
Uh, again, Superman and Lois Season 4 is probably going to hit our screens around September, October. So uh, we have a little bit to wait for that, but it is 10 episodes long and it will be the final 10 episodes of the show forever. <laughs> I don't want to hear forever, but yeah, I, obviously it will be. <laughs> well, it will be, it will yeah, be forever. But... For this inter, in, in um, version of it. Uh, John Patrick Van Pell asking, do you guys see a Superman and Lois comic book coming over the course of a three-year deal to continue the series? Uh, I don't know about a three-year deal, but you never say never. I, they obviously did a Superman and Lois comic book as part of uh, that series of books that were focusing on the TV uh, versions of the characters. Um, but whether or not an ongoing series is doable remains to be seen. I have my doubts, but again, you never know. Uh, anything is possible. If there's enough fan demand for it, then DC would be silly not to do it. Yeah, I mean, I doubt it, but if they did it with that team who did the, um, who did the TV, um, adaptation I mean, what was that for was that just for the um the arrowverse yes or was it was doing that yeah it was just an arrowverse uh, i think there were four different episodes uh, titles uh that were just uh there were three from different shows i think there was um and then they had one it was a, a one finale that was kind of an all-encompassing thing but you could read them individually um right. but yeah uh I'll look it up quickly. Because I remember see. it was Gromit, Tom Gromit, and who I forget who who was it that did who who wrote it. God, I'm putting up all these questions. I can't think. Yeah, of, exactly, can't you're think asking me questions, and I don't know the answers to them off the top of my head. I don't know either. But uh, I will. Uh, I will that find it. Gromit. Yeah. I will find it, and uh, we will have a look at it uh, when I get a chance to find the information on SupermanHomepage.com. So uh, I will let you know when we find it, but at the moment it's not coming to hand. So uh, we'll have a look and get back to that. Not doing very well at the moment as far as my uh, research. My brain is frazzled at the moment. Well, neither, neither, I'm bringing up the questions and I don't know. Yeah, and like don't questions know. without notice. It wasn't in the topics for tonight's know. discussions, I, I, Mark. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're tripping me up. I won't say anything else. I won't say anymore. You, you do this first of the show. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> All good. Uh, Okay, so let's uh, let's move on. Let's do some stuff that we do know and can talk about, and that is our regular segments. And the regular segment that we are going to jump straight into while I do some research in the background to uh, cover my backside is the super secret soundbite. So let's jump straight into that. Only one thing alive but less than four legs can hear this frequency, Superman, and that's you. All right, so... The super secret soundbite from last month was this. We both moved to Metropolis at the same time. On the same block. And for three years, we both worked on the 16th floor. 17th floor. At the Daily Planet, where... Uh... I was a beat reporter covering City Hall. Yes, you were. So there you have it. A uh, bit of a, a weird one. But it was, in fact, from the Harley Quinn animated series... Season 3 episode titled A Very Problematic Valentine's Day Special. And that was Superman and Lois talking about how they met and how their relationship started. And we had two people guess that correctly. Who were they, Mark? They were Casey Jones and Ryan Ignatius Pratt. Well done to Casey and Ryan for guessing where in the world of Superman that sound came from. Here is our new super secret soundbite. Take a listen. Kara, I thought I told you to stay out of trouble. Who, me? I'm not in trouble. And by the way, it's Supergirl. See? Super? Girl. Well, there you have it. If you think you know where in the world of Superman that sound came from, head to supermanhomepage.com. Under the contact menu, you will find the super secret soundbite entry form. Fill that out, send your entry in, and we will read the names of each person who guesses it right when we return to this segment at the end of April. So get involved in the super secret soundbite. All right, moving forward, let's jump into This Week in History. Come with me now, my son, as we break through the bottles of your earthly confinement, traveling through time and space. 
All right, so as I pull up my notes and try to get the graphics up at the same time, uh, let's have a look at this week in history for uh, this week going back decade by decade and make sure I haven't got any other images loaded at the time. Let's have a look how we go. All right, here we go. Back in March of 1954, uh, so nothing in 1944. But in March 1954, we saw the release of Adventure Comics number 200, which uh, saw Superman, sorry, Superboy and the Apes. And there were also an Aquaman, Johnny Quick and Green Arrow backup stories. But uh, Superboy swinging through the vines there with the apes. And there are those apes again. <laughs> there are those apes again, yep. Yeah. So that was back in 1954. Also back in 1954 on the same date. Uh, we saw the release of World's Finest Comics number 70 and the Superman story. And this was the two faces of Superman. And then there was a couple of other stories, Casebook Mystery, Green Arrow, Jiminy, and the Magic Book, Tomahawk, A Day in the Life of Paratrooper, and a Batman story. But on the cover there, uh, we've got Superman, Robin, and Batman. And looks like they're getting shoe shines. Yeah. It does. Uh, they look a little, um, I don't know, Robin and Batman look a little funny. <laughs> Do a little bit. So that was 1954. Yeah. And the same week, back in 1954, was a busy time for Superman fans. There was Action Comics 192, the cover story, The Man Who Sped Up Superman. And there was also Congo Bill, Tommy Tomorrow, and Vigilante stories backing up uh, in this comic book. But... Uh, yeah, Superman looks like he's saving a kid from getting crunched by two cars. Yes. Nice acrobatics there. Mm. The man says, hmm, I'll show you how you could have uh, could have done that better and faster, Superman. So obviously mm. he doesn't imp uh, he's not impressed with Superman's heroics there. But nevertheless, we jump then on to 1964, March 26, 1964, saw the release of Action Comics 312, uh, a very f famous cover there, King Superman versus Clark Kent, Metallo. Wow. wow. The fan and yeah. the Supergirl story, the fantastic menace of the LLs as a backup. <laughs> but yeah, Clark Kent, Metallo? Okay. That's Yeah, that's an interesting one. I've seen, I'm, I'm familiar with the cover, mm. but... Especially not... that throne and that uh, brown that Superman's wearing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Also, 1964 saw the release of Adventure Comics 320 and The Legion of Superheroes, The Revenge of the Knave from Krypton. And there was a Superboy backup story, Superboy's Switch in Time. So Superboy and the Legion heavily involved in that one. And uh, then also in 1964, Superman's girlfriend, Lois Lane, number 49, the Unknown Superman and Lois Lane Beauty Queen were the two stories in this one, but The Unknown Superman on the cover there uh, with uh, art by Kurt Schaffenberger. Pretty cool. Yeah. As as I can't Lana, read the... Uh, again. Yeah, I can't read the, um, the balloons. Mm, a bit small there on the cover. Yeah. Nevertheless, uh, we move on to 1974, where March 1974 saw the release of Superman Family 165. Uh, the Supergirl story was Princess of the Golden Sun. There are also stories of Jimmy Olsen, Superboy, Superman, Lois Lane, another Superboy, and another Superman story. Uh, these obviously was a this was a 100-page spectacular of uh, for only 60 cents. The Superman Family saw many stories in this book, so. Uh, yeah, I just you know I just noticed it says way on the top Jimmy Olsen presents. I know it was yeah. um, took over Jimmy. I knew Superman Family took over Jimmy Olsen, but I never noticed it said Jimmy Jimmy Olsen presents. I wonder did they all say that because I never noticed that. Yeah, good point. Maybe it was just uh, one of some of the early ones. I have to go yeah. and have a look at some of those. Uh, also, mm -hmm. in 1974, we saw the release of Action Comics 436. And a great Nicholas Cardi cover there, uh, the Super Cigars of Perry White, and it was a Green <laughs> Arrow backup story. So I'm guessing the cigars gave Perry some superpowers. I think so. 
and I don't think that's the only time his cigars are given. (laughs) What an interesting idea. Uh, Then we jump forward uh, 10 years to 1984, where March 29th saw the release of Action Comics 556, and the title of the story was Endings, and uh, yeah, there you have Superman in handcuffs, I'm guilty. I don't remember what he was guilty for. Mm. Same week, 1984, saw the release of New Adventures of Superboy number 54, The Dumbbell That Saved the Earth. Okay. (laughs) Weird <laughs> title. Uh, so that was 1984. Mm. Also, that same week, 1984, saw the world's finest comics, 304, The Origin of Null and Void. Two oh. characters that I don't remember hearing of ever again after that. No, I don't think so. And that uh, it sounds like a late era uh, world's finest <laughs> with characters mm. that never heard from again. Exactly. Yeah. All right, so then we jump forward to 1994, and I do remember this one, Deadly Measures, was uh, Adventures of Superman 512, uh, Parasite obviously there. This is obviously in that era where Superman was, you know, had had consumed so much energy, it was, you know, like a monster, and uh, they got the Parasite there to try to drain some of his powers, uh, written by Carl Kiesel, pencils by Barry Kitson, and inks by Ray McCarthy. Definitely remember that one. Remember that whole story. Mm. So that was uh, in 1994, the same week, Steel Number 4 came out, Louise Simonson writing that one. And then uh, also in 1994, Superman the Man of Steel Annual Number 3 came out with Superman and Batman on the cover there. Unforgiven is the title of that story. Um, I don't remember this one. That was uh, an Elseworlds. Okay. It says, yeah, it says on top it's Elseworlds, yeah. and I'm trying to remember the this, this story, though. Because mm. um, there's so many different Superman Elseworlds I'm thinking of, but that's this particular one, I, I don't, uh, Not I don't remember. Yeah. Then we jump forward to 2004, and this very iconic cover, Avengers JLA wow. number four, The Brave and the Bold. And obviously, there he's got Superman with Captain America's shield, Thor's hammer, mm-hmm. uh, looking very uh, disheveled, but nevertheless very powerful. And you've seen this cover many, many times before with uh, by the great mm-hmm. George Perez. Ah, uh, one of the best. Well, yeah. one of the best covers, but also one of the very best artists ever in in comics. Yeah, indeed. So uh, that was also in 2004. We had this week uh, JLA number 95, uh, The Enemy Within, uh, The Tenth tenth Circle Strikes Again. And this was a uh, cover by John Byrne and Jerry Ordway. Um, So that was 2004. Also that same week, Legion number 31. uh, Included this one because it's got housekeeping, but... um, Looks like Superman from the Legion there on the cover, uh, doing some cleanup work. Weird cover. Yeah, this is what year was this? This is nine, uh, 2004. 2004, okay. Hmm. Is that... I, I remember, yeah, I remember, Con- I remember Connell going, going into the future for, for a time. Maybe it was Connell. That may have been, that may have been it. Yeah. Uh, also that same week, two, Superman 203, 203 came out. Uh, Divinity was a story written by Joe Kelly with art by Michael Turner. Uh, Turner doing the cover there as well. And uh, there's a special six-page Jim Lee sketchbook bonus within this particular issue. So very cool. All right, then jumping yes. to just 10 years ago, March 2014, saw the Dark Lantern story in Adventures of Superman number 11. And that same week, we saw DC Universe versus Master of the Universe number 6, Cracking Skulls by Keith Giffen. And also that same week, Injustice Year 2 number 3, even though Superman's not on the cover, obviously Injustice was a very Superman-centric story for the most part. And also that same week, Red Lanterns, number 29, had Superman and Supergirl both on the cover there. 
uh, Supergirl joining the Red Lanterns for uh, a time uh, with all her rage and uh, mental uh, health issues that she seemed to be dealing with in this era. <laughs> uh, also that same week, another busy week, Superman number 29 came out this week. 1,000 Degrees in the Shade was the story title by Scott Lobdell with art by Ed Beans uh, and a couple of different inkers there. Brett Booth doing the cover with Norman Ratman on the inks. So that was this yeah. week in history and the comic book side of things. Do you remember that comic book 10 years ago? I I don't. I wasn't reading it at, at that time, but I do know this was a um, not one of the best remembered uh, times in, in Superman, not just from the New 52, just in general, these are not the most loved stories. Fair enough. Now looking into the mm -hmm. real world this week, Monday, 25th of March. Today marks uh, the uh, release of Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. Uh, it was released um, in obviously theaters 2016. So uh, I don't know if that you remember that with any great yeah. memory or fondness or not. Yes, all the all the fans cheered when that came out. Oh wow, that was you know, <laughs> man, that that movie just split up the the community like like nobody's business. nothing I ever I ever saw before or after even. I mean, it yeah. was just even to this day, it's still. Still wow. divides fans. Also yeah. on May, Mar sorry, March 25th, but in 2005, Crypto the Superdog premiered on Cartoon Network. So that was back in 2005. Probably better memories. <laughs> yes. Than BVS. Brings back more of a smile. Yeah. More joy. It's, it's back a smile, yes. Exactly. Uh, March 26th, oops, March 26th is the birthday of artist Jose Luis Garcia Lopez. Praise be his name. He was born in Spain in 1948. So uh, a legend and true gentleman. Uh, happy birthday, Jose. Yes. Also celebrating a birthday this coming week um, on March 27th, 1971. So he's just a little bit older than me. Uh, Nathan Fillion who will play Green Lantern, Guy Gardner, in the upcoming Superman movie, was born in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, back in 1971. So uh, happy birthday to Nathan. Um, and on March 31st, we will be celebrating the anniversary of Action Comics 252, which introduced us to Superman's cousin Supergirl in 1959. So iconic issue yeah. there. That is an extremely iconic issue. Definitely. I've got a statue of that uh, cover that they came out with. Oh, yeah. Really cool. Also, yeah. uh, on March 31st, Mark McClure, best known for playing Jimmy Olsen in, obviously, the Christopher Reeve movies and the Supergirl movie, was born in San Mateo in California in 1957. So happy birthday to Mark McClure, another great gentleman. Yes. So that my friends was this week in history so some very iconic moments in time both on the comic book world in the movie world and tv world and some great birthdays for some great superman personalities yep all right well that was this week in history we are just over the halfway mark of tonight's show so we are going to play some messages come back on the flip side to do the fan favorite segment of our show and then get into the comic book side of the world of Superman. And we've also got some merchandise to look at as well. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back right after these messages. We'll be back in a moment with the exciting climax of today's episode. So stand by. If you're enjoying Superman Homepage Live, then please like and share this video with your family and friends. Also, if you'd like to subscribe to our YouTube channel, then you can click on the bell to receive notifications whenever we post a new video. You can also join our YouTube membership program, just click the join button below. Or you can become a patron and support our website by going to patreon.com slash superman homepage. Look, 
Up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's supermanhomepage.com, the number one Superman fan site in the world. Supermanhomepage.com, covering the world of Superman from the 1930s to today. News, reviews, rumors, and reports. Supermanhomepage.com, for all your Superman comics, TV shows, movies, cartoons, radio shows, and more. Everything you ever wanted to know about the Man of Steel and more. SupermanHomePage.com Thanks, Superman Homepage, for all the support over the years. I uh, really appreciate it. I'm Matt Ballmer. I'm the voice of Superman and Superman Unbound, and this is the Superman Homepage. Right here on Superman Homepage. Hi, Steven. Do you want to start a video podcast but don't know where to start? Or maybe you've been podcasting for a while but you're bored with the traditional audio only format. Either way, I've got just a thing. Ecamm Live is the number one choice for busy podcasters who want to easily create professional looking video podcasts. But why? They're more engaging for your audience and video keeps their attention so they're more likely to stick around and become part of your community. Let me show you just how easy it is with Ecamm Live. You can drag and drop graphics right onto your show to make it more professional. If you have a co-host or guests, bringing them onto your show is a breeze. You can even tweak the look of your guest video no matter where they are. And you can set up your scenes in advance so when your show starts, you can play your intro and easily switch between your scenes during the show. So it really simplifies your workflow and eliminates the need for a bunch of editing. Plus, your isolated audio tracks are saved right onto your computer along with your high quality video files. So there's no more waiting for a link to download your files. They're right there. And once you're done, you can upload it to your syndication platform. It's time to give your audience what they really want. So if you're ready to become a visual authority and take your podcast to the next level with video, join the Ecamm fan. Thousands of podcasters have already made the switch. We're just waiting on you. Just go to supermanhomepage.com slash Ecamm. When Lex Luthor unleashes his plan to destroy the world, you can be just like Superman. With a Superman Returns in Plato suit, you can pretend to have all the muscles of a man of steel. Then, strap on the punch and crush gloves to hear the sound of every punch you throw and everything you crush. In Plato suit accessory, you put it together, batteries not included, punch and crush gloves so separately. And when trouble hits the skies, you'll be ready with a fight and fly FX cape with real flying sounds. This cape responds to every move you make, whether you turn left or right to save the day. And we're back on Superman Homepage Live, where, as I said, supermanhomepage.com slash live is the place to go if you want to chat with us tonight. We might have some time, but we'll see how we go, because we've got the fan favorite segment now and some comic book stuff straight after it. Here we go into the fan... Oh, before we do get into the fan favorite segment of the show, that's the Superman and Lois comic book I spoke about. Earth Prime was yeah. the series. It was number two of six. Uh, so that was the only Superman and Lois comic book uh, that has been released to date. Um, so not feeling so silly now. I found the information I needed and hope that answers your question. It was a limited series, Earth Prime, and that was the comic. There you go. And that was Dan Jenkins wrote that then. Yes. There you have it. All right, pushing I... on. You feel better now? Yeah. Good. <laughs> Excellent. Don't want to move forward Thank until you. you're happy. All right. Let's go with the uh, fan favorite segment of our show. All right. So our fan favorite question from last week was what, Mark? What is your favorite Superman clock, watch, or timepiece? All right. So who do you have up first? We have Alfie Falsatelli, who wrote, I received this watch from my parents in the mid-90s. It is limited to 15,000 and has a green indigo backlight that was popular back then. I used to wear it often and realized I'd like to preserve it because whenever I see it, it brings back great memories of a great time. Excellent. Very nice watch, uh, Superman, with the mm-hmm. long hair. Not a mullet. Long hair. Not a mullet. On, not a mullet. Uh, very nice. Watch lights up. Very cool. Thank you, Alfie. That's uh, much appreciated that you sent that in. Uh, also, next up, we had Lorenzo, 
uh, Valdez, who said, Growing up, I had an awesome Justice League animated series alarm clock. My parents brought it for me when I started kindergarten and began getting up early to catch the school bus. It had a Batman figure on top of the base and it had a background nightlight feature featuring panels of Superman, Batman and the Flash fighting against Copperhead, Ultra Human Eye and Solomon Grundy. All these years later and I still remember dialogue from the recordings that would play when the alarm clock would go off. Copperhead's venom can incapacitate even Superman, but rare are the times that the snake can get so close to the Man of Steel. Batman the Dark Knight stands guard over Gotham City, but when duty calls, the world's greatest detective joins forces with the heroes of the Justice League to protect the world. With Superman's strength, Batman's skill, and the Flash's speed, even a brute like Solomon Grundy can be defeated. Let me tell you, this alarm was louder than Silver Banshee and Black Canary combined, so it didn't just look cool, it was effective. Very nice, I haven't seen that one before, that is very impressive. That is, I like that. Thank you, Lorenzo. What a great entry. And Ryan Ignatius Pratt wrote, Unfortunately, I do not have an answer to the fan favorite question this week since I sadly do not have a Superman watcher clock. That said, I was both surprised and delighted to see your wonderful coverage of the recent Superman in concert event in Los Angeles. I live in California myself, and so I was able to attend. If you're curious, attached are a few pics of this amazing day, including the outside of the Walt Disney Concert Hall. The members of the Los Angeles Philharmonic and the Philharmonic's talented and energetic conductor, Thomas Wilkins. I was fortunate to have second row seats down in the orchestra section. It was a wonderful evening that I'll never forget. Keep up the great work with Superman Homepage Alive. You and Mark are doing a wonderful job. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. And thank you for sharing those great pictures. And yeah, you did have great seats. That's like right up there. I mean, that's, that's, you need earplugs to be that close. So, uh, well done uh thank you for sending those photos and thank you to both lorenzo and alfie for their superman watches and clock entries for the fan favorite question do you have a favorite clock or watch mark i do not no no i i do i have some i'm gonna see if i can uh jump to using my camera from my phone and then do a bit of a wander uh let's see if this works Yep, here we go. All right, so I'm going to do a bit of a wander. I'm not going to be within earshot of the microphone, so just bear with me as I jump over. Yep. Yeah. Oops. There we go. No, so that was nice collection. That was just let me add Mark back there. That's a nice could, collection. Could you see all that? Yeah. Cool. Yes. What happened to my headset? It's wrapped around the boom of my microphone. <laughs> there we go. So there was yeah. That was just some of the items in my watch part and clock part of the shelf. Quite a few other clocks and things around, but uh, not all of them sure. are working. So, yeah. Uh, Steve, you did an open box reveal, didn't you? Um, of one of them? I mm. can't remember if I did. I might have. But, um, yeah, so that's the fan favorite segment of our show. Uh, apologies to those who are listening to the show after the fact because you wouldn't have seen any of those visuals and you'd be wondering what the hell was going on. Mm. <laughs> apologize you can watch the video on youtube uh if you want to see some of those visuals all right mark what is our new fan favorite question for this week our new fan favorite is what is your favorite triangle era comic book cover wow yeah we're going to be getting talking about the triangle era in a second uh for obvious reasons but uh what is your favorite cover from the triangle era uh and if you're not sure what the triangle era is we're going to be getting into that right now so uh dc announced this week on the comic book side of things that the upcoming release of superman the triangle era omnibus volume one hardcover is coming our way here is the cover to that fantastic looking collection it is the background that is behind me tonight on my green screen the triangle era omnibus volume one uh this 
collects stories uh, from the 90s in a massive omnibus collection. Uh, it uh, will include volumes such as Superman 49 to 64, Adventures of Superman 472 to 486, Action Comics 659 to 673, and Superman the Man of Steel number one to number eight. It will be valued at $116.52 US and is scheduled to arrive on September 3rd. But uh, the reason this is so important and so exciting, Michael Bailey wrote a really great article on Superman uh, homepage called A Brief History of the Triangle Era of Superman uh, in light of this announcement. And Michael's um, article will explain to you everything you need to know about this triangle numbering era of Superman. Back in 1991, uh, to have all the books tied up together, uh, they had a sequential number on the covers of Superman action comics. Then they introduced Adventures of Superman. And then eventually there was also introduced uh, Superman, uh, the Man of Steel, and Superman, the Man of Tomorrow. And that way we got a Superman comic book every week of the year. Uh, and the triangle numbers let you know in which order you should be reading the issues because they did all have some common threads, even though they told their own stories and were keeping them themselves on track uh, with their own particular individual stories. They, they did have kind of overarching themes that allowed you to read those books in order and it was a great time to be a Superman reader. Obviously the death of Superman is included in that era. They were part of the triangle numbering uh, time. But Michael's article is just phenomenal. He, Even if you were reading comic books at the time, you think you know everything about the triangle era of Superman comic books, Trust me, read Michael's article because he delves into things that I didn't know and uh, he's just a wealth of knowledge about this era and it is a really great article about a great looking upcoming omnibus. That was really just one of the absolute best times in, in Superman comic history, I think. I mean, I you know, I love the, the, the pre-crisis a lot, but the, that triangle era was just, you know... It, it, you look, you look back on it so fondly, you know, it's just, just a great time. It was definitely a great time. And yeah, um, I will be talking about this in my upcoming uh, Big Blue Report, the twice monthly newsletter that uh, will be published on the 1st of next month. So uh, make sure you subscribe to that as well. Uh, John Patrick Van Pelt says, I've been listening to Michael Bailey's From Crisis to Crisis podcast on Amazon Music, and I would, uh, my favorite is Superman, I say my favorite is Superman number 75. I don't recall what triangle number that is. Um, and that was the thing, each year had its own triangle number, so it wasn't necessarily an ongoing big number that you had to remember. Uh, it was just about um, the way things were going at the time. So, um, yeah, definitely a great era for Superman comic books. The best. The best. I know we've had some great comic books of recent times. The current uh, issues and titles have been fantastic. Um, and I don't know if we're just looking back with nostalgia, but uh, that was a great era in the 90s to be reading Superman comic books. Obviously, uh, the death of Superman included in that. And the sequential geek finding a nice triangle icon emoji to uh, add to the discussion. <laughs> That's uh, <laughs> quite impressive. Good find. All right, so that is the upcoming Omnibus. Again, if you're going to order that, then please do so through the Superman homepage. Uh, it's a great way to contribute to the site with no extra cost to you. Now, speaking of comic books that you might want to purchase, but this one might be a little bit out of your price range, uh, an original 1938 edition of Action Comics number 1, Superman's debut issue, currently sits at over $5 million at Heritage Auctions. Can you believe that? $5 million. Uh, it's going to set a new record, obviously. But uh, the very first time Superman appeared in comic books anywhere in the world, any, in anything, actually, for Superman's debut. Uh, it's an 8.5 wow. rated CGC version. It's called the Kansas City Pedigree copy of Action Comics number one. And uh, auction ends in April. But... Just a little bit out of my price price range. I'm not sure about you, Mark. Yeah, just just a little bit. I was thinking about it, but then I said, "Ah, oh, no, it's gonna." Yeah. 
you know, but pay, pay the bills. <laughs> to own that, I mean, it's uh, a lot of responsibility. Big time. To own that car. Yeah, you'd be you'd be storing it somewhere very secure and uh, yeah, underground. I you wouldn't even feel confident in putting it on display. Like seriously, just I don't oh. know how you. It's just yeah, it'd be a highly responsible uh, weight on on your shoulders, like weight of responsibility. Yeah, that would not be framed in the living room. No, don't hang it on your wall. I'll put it above your mantelpiece. Uh, that's that's one. Belongs in a museum. Yes, exactly. So, yeah, uh, ends next month. We will keep you abreast of just how much it goes for. It was, when I first wrote the story, expected to, it was just over $4 million. Now it's already over $5.1 million and rising. So it's going to set a record, folks. Um, yeah. Yeah, just an underground world, underground flood, maybe. I mean, where would you... Is it well, anywhere secure in the world? Like, seriously, you can't no. put it up in a high rise because that could topple. You can't put it underground because that might flood. Uh, right, right. I don't know. Somewhere, there's just nowhere safe. There is no, that's the thing. There is, that's why the responsibility, there is no safe place to put something like that. No, exactly. All right. So uh, let's have a look at the comic books that we probably can afford and they are coming out this week. And there aren't that many Superman books to speak of this week, but uh, here is what is coming out this week in the world of Superman for comic book fans. There's only a Power Girl number seven. When I say only, I mean, if you're a Power Girl fan, sorry, I don't mean to um, discredit Supergirl, but that comic is available in a couple of different variant covers right there. Quite a few actually, even Streaky gets a look in, a couple of different variations on the costumes. But in the collected side of things, Absolute Luthor Joker hardcover, the 2024 edition, is out this week. Also out this week as a trade paperback is Batman Superman World's Finest Volume 1, The Devil Nezha. And then also the JL Ape, the complete collection trade paperback, is also out this week. So if you're a comic book fan, that's what you can look forward to in the comic book world. So not a great week. Nothing for us to review. Uh, from individual issues because we're not reviewing the Power Girl, so a week off for our reviewers, but uh, nevertheless, something to look forward to. Yes, not a not a big fan of that Luther Joker uh, crossover collection. Right? Collection, mm. yeah. No, I mean, well, what's incredible? Yeah, it was the two different. Um, I guess Brian Azzarello and Le Libra Mayo did two different, you know, books. Um, Nothing against either of them, especially, I mean, I, Lieber Mayo is really a terrific artist, but I just, his take on both uh, Luther and Superman and, and Joker and all that, I just wasn't a big fan of that. Fair enough. No, okay. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's look at the things that are coming outside of the comic book world as far as collectibles are co concerned. And uh, Entertainment Earth are now taking pre-orders for the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Mega Fig Wave 7 Kryptonite Doomsday Superman Batman action figure, also known as All American Boy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is okay. a very, I mean, like Doomsday doesn't have enough going for him, he's got to have Kryptonite bones yeah. as well. Right. Uh, but uh, yeah, this one is $39.99 US and expected to ship in June. Uh, and you can pre-order it through our website. Obviously, comes with a stand, display base, um, and it comes in a packaged in a window box with uh, artwork uh, on the back of the kryptonite fisted doomsday grabbing mm -hmm. Superman's cape. So that's uh, <laughs> that's an interesting figure. Not one that I'll def necessarily be adding to my collection, but. Uh, Stands seven inches tall, so some fans might like that one. Yeah, interesting figure, but yeah, something I would not be running out to buy. No, fair enough. Uh, if you're in London, England, uh, you might want to get along to a exhibition known as, oh, turn off the Doomsday figure there, Heroes, the British Invasion of American Comics. 
It is on at the moment, well, it's not yet, April to October. Uh, the Cartoon Museum in London, England will be presenting this exhibition. Uh, the comic books are American as Apple Pie and Uncle Sam, but uh, you can visit the Cartoon Museum to discover how British artists and writers invaded America and made their mark on iconic superheroes and more. Uh, there's uh, iconic superheroes like Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, Hellboy, uh, including works by Brian Boland, David Lloyd, Doug Braithwaite, Alison Sampson. And uh, this is, as I said, starting 25th of April. It will go on through till Saturday, October 19th. Uh, adults can get in for £9.50. That should be an interesting, uh, that should be an interesting show. Yeah, interesting exhibition. So something for fans in London to uh, check out if you're uh, interested in having a look at the British Invasion of American Comics exhibition. All right, uh, talking about exhibitions and conventions and the like, uh, there is WonderCon uh, is on this coming weekend. And uh, if you're in Anaheim, California, you might want to get along because uh, Marv Wolfman and Jay Lee will both be there for all three days, March 29th to March 31st. So that is the convention uh, WonderCon taking place in Anaheim this coming weekend, coming up. Uh, Marv Wolfman would be great to meet. Yes, definitely. Now, at the Superman homepage, uh, we uh, have another uh, caption contest running at the moment. And this is the image that we are looking for you to come up with a caption for, a meme. Uh, leave as many captions as you can think of. Obviously, keep it family friendly. Uh, of course, I could see this one going uh, yeah. down a different path. Uh, but yes. uh, yeah, as many entries as you can come up with for this image. Come up with something funny. Uh, see what you can do with your uh, unleash your wit on this image at the Superman homepage website. Uh, you'll find the caption contest under the at the top of the show at top of the website uh, where you will see that image. Uh, for the caption contest, so get involved in that. Also, I want to apologize if you've been trying to visit the website this past week and you've come up against some issues with the site being down or unavailable. Uh, we have had some technical issues on the server side of things, but I seem to have ironed those out and the website has stayed stable for at least 48 hours to date. So I'm grateful for that because um, I had it here last week and I pulled it all out uh, after uh, stressing about why the website kept <laughs> going down and uh, yeah, these, these technical things behind the scenes on the server side of things are never fun to deal with. I'm more of a visual artistic person and the technical side of those kinds of things do my head in, but uh, all seems to be running smoothly at the moment. So uh, fingers crossed it stays that way. So we appreciate your patience. But that is pretty much all we have time for for tonight's show. I want to thank my co-host, Mark Lax. Thank you, Mark. Uh, always great to chat with you. Thank you, Steve. And thank you to all our live listeners. Don't forget to leave us a thumbs up before you do depart tonight. Give us a quick like, uh, both on Facebook or on uh, YouTube there. We appreciate any support you can get. I uh, want to thank our sponsors and patrons. Uh, Douglas Meacham, John Patrick Van Pelt, Tina Murray, and C. Ralph Adler. Thank you for your support. And, yeah, I won't pull out any more hair. Thank you, Justin. I don't have any more to pull out unless it's maybe on my chest or somewhere. But uh, nevertheless, Mark and I will be back next week for our Monday, April 1st, 7.30 p.m. edition of Superman Homepage Live. Hope you'll join us then for an April Fool's Day edition of Superman Homepage Live. No pranks. We will be here. It's not. We're not going to tell you it's on, and then we just don't show up. Uh, we will be yeah. here next week, Monday, April first, at seven thirty PM Pacific time, for another edition of Superman Homepage Live. Hope you'll join us then. Until then, be sure to check out supermanhomepage.com for all your daily news updates on everything surrounding the Man of Steel. On behalf of myself and Mark Lax, for those who celebrate it, have a happy Easter this coming Sunday. Hope you enjoy the festivities. Don't eat too many chocolate eggs. Um, and uh, we will see you next Monday. I know it will be a, a Easter Monday, and some of you might have some time off. Uh, but it will be Easter. It will be Tuesday for me, so I'll definitely be back at work, back at my desk. Sorry, Mark, if you had any plans for Easter Monday, but nevertheless, uh, we'll be here doing the show then. Oh. All right, folks. Good night. Take care. See you next week. <laughs>